there is a kind of sad magnificence to art created by bad people. My favorite novel of all time is Journey to the End of Night by noted French fascist and Vichy collaborator Louise Ferdinand Céline. In short, it's a fictionalized version of Céline's real life story. Going through the First World War, travels to colonial Africa in, the, in a kind of sad parody of Joseph Conrad. To America and then back to Paris and his work as a doctor in the working class suburbs. Céline, in my humble opinion, wrote the greatest novel of the 20th century. Oliver Stone is not Louis Ferdinand Céline. Oliver Stone, by his own admission, used to be a right-winger, and looking at the scripts he wrote before breaking into directing big time himself in the late 80s, it's not really necessary for him to admit it. He wrote Scarface, directed by Brian De Palma, and Conan the Barbarian, directed by Jean Milius. Michael Cimino, on the other hand, directed the... Michael Cimino, on the other hand, directed the, in my opinion, not very good, The Deer Hunter, about Russian-American steelworkers going to Vietnam and then the messy masterpiece, Heaven's Gate. Year of the Dragon, then. In short, it's very good, but not very accessible. M Mickey Rourke plays a cop on the edge, lo let loose in Chinatown, where he pursues the downfall of the Chinese gang in control of the area. He has martial problems and falls in love with a Chinese journalist who he helps and gets help help from in return. It's very racist and sexist, but there is a kind of sadness about the Rourke character. While I am the leftist, the purpose of this uh, uh, essay is not to be political, but I do think there is a kind of sadness that leftists usually don't get. They would take the Rourke character and place him in, in an analytical context, which, while interesting, would create a level of distance. What I think is so great about Year of the Dragon, which I don't think is entirely successful, is that it feels like such a scream from a pri primal place of anger and sadness. An existential cry for help that can't be possible when you have filmmakers who doesn't identify with the Rourke character. At the same time, I think there is a kind of conflict here. The screenplay is pure Oliver Stone with, with all the macho posturing that entails. While Cimino, a great director, has to wrangle that pulp mess into something resembling a coherent human story. He doesn't really succeed. Both Deer Hunter and Heaven's Gate are better representations of a pure vision. But the, that tension is what makes uh, the movie worth watching to me. Chimino manages to, through his style, take pulp characters and give them a soul. Stone wants to make a kind of pulp detective story. Chimino wants to make an art film. I can only speak for myself, but when I praise, for example, a novel by a noted fascist, uh, as Luis Ferdinand Céline, I do so because I think the merits are tied to the fact that Céline was probably not a very happy man. The fact that he was a reactionary fascist, so to speak, gave him access to the parts of the human soul not usually available to, the, to people. Because it is ugly to entertain the notions that rational people think and feel those ugly things. This is not to say that leftist or progressive art is always bad. Of course, when I read A Doll's House by Ibsen, I feel the perfection of structure and character development. But when I read Miss Julie by August Strindberg, I can touch the mind of another person. Almost, almost enter into the mind of another human being. Because of the messy contradictions within a damaged soul at full display. This, of course, demands the talent to back it up as a work of art. While it's fun to talk about the room in this way, there is no thought put into it, no structure, no talent. There is only pure, unfiltered id, which obviously is fascinating in its own way. My way of viewing art is to try and find the cracks and what they reveal about the values of the artwork. This is why I can respect Ibsen as the greater playwright, but I will always keep Strindberg more close to my heart. 
this may sound uh, kind of banal, but a work of art is a kind of balancing act. And in uh, the balancing act, the greatest interest comes from the closeness of the fall. In my opinion, Year of the Dragon does make it all the way to the end of the line, but not with such uh, significant stumbles that most people probably won't respond well to it. It doesn't help that Shimino's style is uh, one where he values nothing that people usually respond to in movies. I despise the style of Martin Scorsese. I think it's loud and noisy. It's a loud, lots of sound and fury signifying nothing. But he's also schooled in the storytelling traditions of American cinema. He was a natural part of the new Hollywood wave of the 1970s, a kind of continuation of the old while renewing it for a younger audience. On the other hand, Michael Cimino developed a style where, the, where what mattered was just that, the style. What is interesting in The Deer Hunter is the fact that the wedding party is fucking 50 minutes long and that the characters are developed almost entirely without big dialogue scenes or traditional dramaturgy. If you rewatch it, so much happens while nothing happens. I think what happened was that without any clout, he had to have like characters and plot. Pauline Kael wrote in the mid 80s, as I see it, Michael Cimino doesn't think in terms of dramatic values. The whole thing is just material for Cimino, the visual artist, to impose his personality on. He doesn't actually dramatize himself. It isn't as uh, if he tore his psyche apart and animated the pieces of it. He doesn't animate anything. I don't think that's really wrong. I just think his interests uh, lie elsewhere. Theme, as I mentioned before, a, a sort of immigrant experience and of class experience and of style. I do think there is a kind of auteurist voice behind the films that I think Kale, because of her own, her own particular points of views, can't quite see. Cimino is without a doubt in my mind the greatest stylist of the new Hollywood wave. Scorsese might be more energetic and Spielberg and De Palma in two widely different ways were experts of emotional manipulation. But in terms of unbrittled, uncompromising vision, I think no other filmmaker of that time comes close. Something which, of course, earned him scorn from collaborators later on, and since he didn't break through into the zeitgeist after The Deer Hunter, I understand and sympathize. Year of the Dragon isn't a great film, it may not even be a very good one, but when you get to know the work of an artist like with a friend, at some point it stops mattering if that work is good or bad in a way. But at the same time, with three films, The Deer Hunter, Heaven's Gate and Year of the Dragon, he created something special, something which can't be replicated. There it stands, like the statue of Ozymandias in the desert, forgotten by time to be discovered by those who stumble upon them. For those who dare, there is great reward in the cinema of Michael Cimino, great and terrible.